Whenever I'm feeling lonely, me ask Father God hold me. God, I give you the glory. Mercy rewrote my story. When I feel down and lonely, me ask Savior console me. God, I give you the glory. Mercy rewrote my story. <laughs> hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the Unusual Grace channel. It is always a pleasure to see you. And for those of you who are stopping by for the first time, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you will be notified whenever there is some new content. I have an important topic for us today. Stay tuned. I think the, the stress and the, the effects of the pandemic affects all of us, whether we're adults or not. But I've observed that many Christians are, they're not growing. They're not sure of what their purpose is. But for those of you, I know I'm going to be heavily criticized for this, but I must represent the voice of the church. of repentance is absent but the fruit of pride is visible these days we seem to have embraced a culture even within the church that when we are wrong even if admitted there is no sorrow so after two years of the pandemic there are a number of things that I think skyrocketed, a number of things that were that became more obvious to us. They probably would have been there a long time ago and a number of things that were triggered. And one such thing is now more than ever on the back end of the pandemic or let's say after two years of being in this state coming out of lockdowns and families were forced to be separated and some families were destroyed having had to be home because the relationships were not strong in the first place. More and more people today are feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. Loneliness is a real thing and we want to talk about it. It's very important. So you might ask the question, what is the cause of loneliness? And there are different causes. I think that, you know, it is important for us to recognize that loneliness is a season in our lives and different people will go through that season at different times, depending on what's going on presently in their personal lives. And any age, at any age, we can feel loneliness. My 10-year-old daughter feels lonely sometimes because she is the only child in our home and she longs for other children to play with whenever she is not at school. And then there are teenagers who are feeling lonely. There are young adults who feel lonely in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and feeling lonely. It doesn't matter. Loneliness is no stranger to human beings. And I think it is an indication of the fact that we were really created for community and created for relationship. And we do best. We are at our best when we are in loving, harmonious relationships where there is 
a deep connection. And, you know, we are around people who just, they just get us, right? They get us. <laughs> I am sure we could come up with a long list, but here goes. Loneliness can be caused, well, people can feel lonely because they have no friends. Unfortunately, we live in a day and age where it is very challenging to find people who you can trust. And uh, some people have decided to deal with that fact by just not getting close to anyone. They don't get close to people. They don't allow people to get close to them. And so they have absolutely no friends. And many times people who have no friends, have no friends, are not uh, in good relationship with the members of their family. That's not always the case because there are some people who they, they are very close with their family members, their relatives, and their relatives really are their friends. And because they have that strong connection and bond within the family unit, they don't care for, for friendships like that. So, but there are some people who they're not from strong family units and they have no friends. So they are very, they are, they are very inclined to feeling lonely. So there is that situation, no friends. Secondly, people can feel lonely because they are longing for a relationship, longing for intimacy. There are some people who are single and this can be at any age. And there is a longing for relationship. That's what the desire is. That's what the, the meditation is on. It consumes the mind. And therefore, there is a sense of loneliness because of that longing for connecting with someone in that way, someone of the opposite sex, longing for relationship. And in some cases, more than just a connection, like hooking up or a relationship, in some cases, longing for marriage. Sometimes people feel lonely because they feel that they have no one to talk with, no one to connect with no one who understands just what they are going through and they feel like they can't trust anyone to tell them really what's going on and the deep matters of the heart that being vulnerable and open and honest they feel like they have no one to, to, to share that with and because they, they fear, it could be a fear of being judged for feeling the way that they do. It could be a fear of just feelings of betrayal if this person were to share it with other people and then how that would look back on that person and all of that. So there's that issue. And this is connected to some of what I would have said before. And I think finally people end up feeling lonely because they harbor unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, yeah. There are some people who really, they, don't, they have no mercy when it comes on to other people. And sometimes people make genuine mistake. You know, sometimes you really have to give people grace. You know, it's not a situation where they're trying to deliberately hurt you or anything like that. But there are some people, for them, you slip, you slide, and you slide right out of their lives. And they just take pleasure. It is their inclination to not talk to you, to keep malice and so on over the simplest of things. They're not into repairing any relationship. And so they keep doing that. That's a pattern in their lives. And then they end up not having anyone who they can talk with, trust anybody who they can call friends because they spent a lifetime or many years pushing people away over simple things that they could have talked out, apologize, forgive, and move on.
So before I make some suggestions as to how you can deal with loneliness, if you are feeling lonely, how we can deal with loneliness, I want to say to my single friends, my single ladies who are Christians and longing for relationship, if you are feeling lonely now, getting married will not cure your loneliness. It is something to deal with now while you are single. The, the, the fact of the matter is we long for this connection with other people. And uh, there is nothing wrong with longing for connection with other people in and of itself. But our deepest longing and the only, our deepest longing is really for Christ. And he is the only one who can satisfy the deep longings of our soul. That desire should be fed. That desire should be confronted. That should be dealt with first and foremost. And then everything else should flow from that. Because people will disappoint you. People will come and go. People will do things to surprise you. And uh, really and truly, our constancy, our anchor, the one who undergirds us and keeps us grounded and stable, firm, is, in, is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that relationship is very important. And I offer him to you if you are watching and you are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. I invite you to try Jesus. From the sincerity of your heart, you can say a prayer to God right where you are and invite him to come into your heart and life to take full control and to just teach you his way, teach you his word, teach you how to live in his presence and let him direct you in everything else. So here are some suggestions. How do we deal with loneliness now? Exercise. You can do some dancing, get some music going and make that a part of your routine. When you dance, when you exercise, you actually feel relieved and you know, it's, it's kind of entertaining yourself while staying healthy. It's good, the movement is good for you and it's good to, so you can think about that in dealing with loneliness. Number two, if you are always at home, you work from home, you wake up and you are just home, you need to get outside. Take a walk, go out, go to some places, take a long drive and just look at the scene. Go to the beach and walk along the water's edge. Go to a river, splash around in it. Enjoy a nice cuisine at a restaurant. Just go out with a friend or friends. Enjoy the conversation. Enjoy the outdoors. If it's in the night, go somewhere where you can actually see the stars in the sky. Just get out of the house sometimes and confront that loneliness. Number three. On the heels of getting out of the house, you can go see a movie if that's your thing, if you're okay with that. Or you can see a play. In Jamaica, we have these local plays that are designed to make you laugh. That's normally, you know, going to the theater to see a play is normally a nice way of getting out good entertainment, nice and clean and, and so on. So you can actually do that. You could do a movie night with family, with friends, you know, watch a movie together and then talk about it. You know, talk about what you liked about it and, you know, talk about some of the interesting parts. If that's your thing, do that. Then, where am I now? Number five, I have lost count. So, <laughs> so 
the next thing that you can do to deal with your loneliness is to play games. You can play board games. There is an online community that can facilitate you playing games with people from all over the world or playing. I think it's better playing with people online than playing with the computer, but you can play games or you can, you know, invite a friend over to play one of your favorite board games, learn to play a new game, maybe a card game or something, but you can play, play games. And if it's not a board game, you can play other games, you know, but just get some play in there. It's something that will make you laugh and enjoy yourself and so on. And that too can be helpful. Another thing that uh, maybe some people haven't thought about is to strengthen the relationships that are around you. Strengthen the relationships. Maybe there are some family members that you really could reach out to and get to know a little bit more about them, talk with them and so on. And maybe the same for some friends, but nothing is wrong with reaching out to people sometimes. You can actually, you know, just, just call to say, hey, what's up? Just checking in, what's going on? And, and reach out a couple of times and maybe that person will reach out back to you as well. But, you know, sometimes there are sometimes people sit down and say, oh, I have no one to talk to. Nobody ever calls me and all of that. And I'm not saying that you are now to become overbearing, you know, calling someone every day and they're not showing any signs of wanting to call you back or anything like that because you have to be wise all right but just every now and then if you know it's okay to do a check-in call and just a chat sometimes it's okay to call friends just to chat you know what's going on you know i have a friend who is living abroad now and before she went abroad you know we we I mean, she's probably the one of few friends that I missed when she left because we would, we would call each other just to talk, just to talk. We would call. I would call sometimes. She would call sometimes. And we just, we just found things to talk about. The conversation was easy because we had a lot of things in common. And when we were on break from work, you know, during the holiday season, we would go and eat ice cream and talk again. And sometimes, you know, I would feel like praying and I would just call and say, you know, meet me at the altar at church and let's pray about a few things. Sometimes she would say, I was thinking that we could pray together, you know, and those things really strengthened our friendship because we were both Christians and we had a lot in common. We had a lot to talk about. We were comfortable in sharing some of the things that would have been going on we had agreement in in many issues you know and i know that it was somebody i could say guess what this is what is going on and you know those people that you can just be yourself around and not feel judged or anything like that and if you are going off track they will say no you need to come back i don't think that's right we had that and it was so good. You know, it was a very good friendship. Really, really appreciated that. So we connect every now and then, but not as regularly as we used to because she no longer, we, we no longer live in the same country. But, you know, that was good. That was, that was good. So sometimes it's okay to reach out to people and, and you know, just connect and let the pieces fall where they may. So as we are going down the list, the next thing I want to suggest that you can do to ease the loneliness is to volunteer. Volunteer at a church, volunteer in your community. You know, maybe there's a citizens association in your community or something like that. You know, when you volunteer to be part of these things, you are around people, you get to meet new people, you are preoccupied with some responsibilities and, you know, stuff like that. So you can actually volunteer. And then the next one, you can, another thing that you can do to deal with loneliness is self-care. Mm -hmm. 
take care of yourself. Go and do your nails. Get your nails done at some point. Get your hair done. Look good. Feel good. <laughs> right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Just take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Practice self-care. Whatever that is. And it's not just the external either. Practicing self-care means that you have to take care of your mind what you listen to, what you concentrate on, what you consistently think about. You have to take care of your mind, take care of your physical health, how you eat and all of that. You know, practice self-care. It's very important. And get this. I know that everyone who knows me personally and hear me say this, they're going to be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope you are taking your own advice. But get this, in practicing self-care, get enough sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm a late night person. But yeah, get enough sleep. When you get some rest, it's, it's actually very helpful to you. All right? So get enough sleep. Get enough rest. Relax sometimes. Another thing that we can do to deal with loneliness, some, sometimes people are so lonely that they get depressed. And uh, depression is one of those mental health challenges that many people go through. Some people have clinical depression and, you know, some people are depressed because a relationship didn't work out after many, many years and how they respond or express that depression is different, but when it gets really bad, it's usually very visible. It's obvious. So I want to I want to say to anyone who you might be depressed, you might have feelings of loneliness quite frequently. Maybe just maybe you could consider seeing a professional counselor, someone who you can talk with about maybe things that you think are on your mind. And or you can see a counselor or see a pastor because sometimes when you actually sit down to speak with someone about how you are feeling and they ask you some questions and maybe you start getting into what could be contributing, what could be feeding these feelings and you get a different perspective, then, you know, that can be very helpful to you. So there is you're not crazy mm -mm. you're not crazy it's okay you can actually go and see a counselor see a pastor but you need to find someone who you can talk with and maybe somebody who will even pray with you as well yeah no the thing about loneliness and maybe even depression is that both these things are associated with feelings of sadness as well. It's unwanted sadness. It's unwanted, you know, it's unwanted disconnect, a feeling of unwanted disconnect, un unwanted isolation. You know, and sometimes you can be in a room full of people. You can be around people. You could even be seen as friendly. People know you when you are outgoing and outspoken, but you still have feelings of loneliness. And therefore, you know, it is something that, you know, it's, it's real. But what I realize is when I think about some of the reasons why people might feel lonely, it really also goes back to the mind and what you think about the most. So for the, 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 the woman who, the single woman or man who is longing for relationship, if that's the only thing you are thinking about and doing nothing about it, let me put that out there. <laughs> if that's the only thing you are thinking about, you will continue to feel lonely 
if, if there's nothing happening in that department, all right? So sometimes it's important for us to really think about what we think about the most, you know, what, 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 what consumes your mind the most. Because if we keep some things on our mind, I like keep it there. It doesn't go anywhere. We think about it night and day. It will further sink us into those feelings of loneliness, sadness, extreme sadness, which leads to depression. So I want to leave with us Philippians chapter four, verse eight, which says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. My friends, the word of God is so beautiful. It's sweet. One psalmist says it's like honey from the honeycomb. That's the word. Get so much word in your system that that's what you are meditating on while you pray about the things that you are concerned about. You can pray about them and leave them with God and allow him to direct your life. While you live on purpose, for purpose, and live the abundant life in Jesus Christ. And I love this verse. And you know what? I also love the two verses that come before it, right before it in Philippians chapter four, verse six, where it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in your minds in Christ Jesus. So guess what? We should live in the place of thanksgiving. So I want to challenge you right now to change your perspective, to change your view, to, to, to focus on something else other than, you know, what the thoughts that you might be feed that might be feeding your feelings of loneliness. I want to challenge you to focus on something else, to begin to think about those blessings that God has given to you and what you should be thankful for and begin to make your list of things that you are grateful to God for. And believe me, I think it might put a smile on your face if you just give that chance. Well, what do you think? I want to invite you to share, you know, anything that you think can be shared. Share what you're thankful for in the comment section. And maybe you have another way that you want to suggest in terms of dealing with loneliness. Well, I invite you to share that as well so that in our community, we can help each other get out of this loneliness, loneliness feeling. So what do you think? What do you do? To deal with loneliness don't go away yet i have another word a final word for you all right thank you for staying Thank you for staying. Thank you for staying. Thank you for staying. All right. Now, I want to, I think it is very important to say this because I have seen where in an effort or attempt to deal with loneliness, Christians have gone outside of God's will and become involved in activities that God does not approve of in his word. 
activities that do not have the blessing or approval of God according to his word. And the thing is, those things never ever last for long. All right. Remember that loneliness is a season. You will go in it and out of it. In it. If you have been in it for a long time in terms of how you feel, you might be depressed. So you need to get some help with that while you pray and, you know, focus on the word. Take Philippians 4, 6, 7, and 8 and own it. Write it and put it somewhere where you always remember it. Speak it out loud so that it can get into your system. Let the word work in your life. Let the word of God work in your life as you submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. But don't go and fornicate to deal with your loneliness because after a few moments of pleasure, you will still be lonely because that's not a connection that's an attachment so don't don't get there don't commit adultery destroy your marriage and you know those kind of things deal with loneliness in a healthy godly way and i know for a fact that when we trust god he will come through for us and not only will he come through for us but he will not allow us to be put to shame thank you so much for watching Always remember, God speaks.